we knew it was going to be tough. We knew they'd respond after the way we beat them the first game. And the first half was very competitive. Uh, they moved the ball at a better pace. They were quick with their cuts and, and they caught us on a lot of action. Uh, we were fortunate to have a 13 point lead, which we built on in the second half. And this was a game where we had multiple contributors. We played all 10 guys, significant minutes, and then got some of the guys in at the end of, uh, at the end of the bench for the last seven. And so everybody contributed today, which was important because I just felt, uh, I looked at them, the, the altitude did have an effect on us. I know people probably don't want to hear that, but uh, even in shoot around today, I thought uh, certain guys were struggling. And so we went to the bench quick. We played maybe three or four minute stints for most of the guys. And it was just a great team effort today. Uh, Matt Mitchell went 14 minutes tonight. Was that kind of the game plan going in, or were you encouraged by how well his knee looked and so you left him in there a little longer? Yeah, we had him on a restriction, time restriction. I think we, our maximum was 15 minutes. So we got 14 out of Matt today. And moving forward, hopefully that will grow where uh, those minutes will go up as we head into Wyoming this coming weekend. So it's really good having Matt back. He just plays with such poise and, 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 and veteran leadership out there that it's great having him back on the floor. It was really fun seeing him back. I'm happy for him. And then back-to-back -back games over 90 points. Is there a specific reason that you've seen for the offensive explosion? Uh, just a specific, like, different movement in the offense? What have you seen? Well, I told the guys, you know, we won't see another matchup zone probably the rest of the year. And so whatever we did offensively, it's hard to say we're going to build on this, other than the fact where we shared the ball, we moved the ball. I think we had 21 assists on 31 baskets. I think we had 27 assists the game before. So we're sharing the ball. So that part can continue to happen. But as far as the offense we ran, it was uh, suited just for Air Force or anybody that would zone us. So I don't think we'll probably see zone the rest of the way. Uh, Jordan Shackler tonight knocking down six three-pointers. Uh, when he gets going like that, is I mean, that, that's got to be pretty good to see. He had six. He could have had 16. He had a lot of good looks. So, yeah, Jordan shoots the ball well, and, and he's a threat. So he pulls the defense out, and when he does, he was able to drive it in there some, uh, find his teammates. So – uh, Jordan's more than just a shooter, but he's a very good shooter. What was the conversation like uh, with Matt just going into game two? Was he wanting more minutes or, or was that just kind of a, a game time decision uh, going into it? Well, we just wanted to make sure that he was healthy before we put him out there. And so he's been cleared by three different doctors. Uh, we had him in a custom brace that uh, just to give another layer of, uh, uh, of uh, protection for him. But I think Matt feels good. I, I, I think if he had to and had his choice, he could have played all 40. But right now he's on a restriction and that those minutes will go up as we continue to move forward off his injury. Last question. Did you end up trying any of the beet juice on this road trip? No, no. But I might have a little on the bus trip back to Denver tonight. Coach, John Howard here. I uh, want to know how your second visit to the doctor was today. It was great. Great. I mean, not. I told the guys, and the veterans know that, this is one of the hardest places to come and play. And even last year's team went down to the wire. The 30-2 and two team was hard fought in here and in the conference tournament. So Air Force is never easy to play, and they're especially hard to play here. Uh, there was an advantage not having crowd in the stands. Obviously, this is a small environment. So when they get their fans in here, it's, it's really loud and really hard to communicate with your team. But I thought we did a good job coming in, playing against a disciplined academy team and finding a way to – score the ball and, and play very good defense. In terms of Matt, obviously the doctors clear him and now it's your decision whether to play him. Um, this was four days earlier than they had initially projected. How did you make that decision? Obviously Matt probably wanted to play last week in Utah, but how did you make that decision not to rush him back against a team he just beat by 37? Well, we want to get his game timing back and, and Matt's very important to the success of this team. And so he went through hard workouts the games he didn't play here, the, the prep day, both prep days for the games. Uh, he went through extended workouts and his pain level was minimal. Uh, the brace gives him an extra layer of protection. And the doctors all thought that it was uh, fine for him to get out there, play with a limit uh, minute restriction to start and start uh, growing those minutes as we move forward. Um, and then a question about the last or five or eight minutes of the game was a much different effort level, it seemed like, tonight than it was um, on Friday. I mean, guys were diving over to the scorer's table. Guys were, I mean, I think Joshua dove, dove headlong for a, for a loose ball. Um, was that something you guys talked about, not wanting to let up in terms of your effort? 
Yeah, especially that that final group that got in. You know, we had a pretty significant lead the first game, and they came in and got outscored down the stretch. So they've got pride, and the veterans got on them. So when the the freshmen and the walk-ons got in down the stretch with a couple veterans, uh, they wanted to uh, earn their minutes, earn their respect, so that they could be trusted moving forward, getting serious game minutes. So I think they came with a, a defensive mindset, and they played better today than they did yesterday down the stretch. In terms of your uh, of Air Force, they talked about making adjustments. Um, did you see anything significant? I mean, it looked like they moved the ball a lot quicker and they slipped almost everything. Is that the yeah, major they were slip, changes yeah, or did you see something screen. else they did? Yeah, we thought they'd slip ball screens, which they did. They moved at a better, quicker pace. I mean, again, they shoot 50% against us, you know? So they shot a high percentage. So what they were running was good. It's just, you know, they cut their turnovers down from the first game. They had a more manageable turnover number, but – you know, again, it's it's our ability to shoot the three, which we made 16. Uh, offensive rebounds, which I think we had uh, a good number of those again. Uh, and so those extra opportunities that we get that they're not getting, you know, they get one opportunity. So shooting 50%, they're not getting offensive rebounds. They didn't force us into a lot of turnovers. So uh, our we, we had more opportunities than they had. And that usually, uh, even if they play good offense, they didn't have enough opportunities to – keep the game close down the stretch. You said on Friday that uh, you were going to see what kind of student Lamont Butler was. He had six turnovers Friday, zero today. So what kind of student is he? Better, much better. I mean, he, he that's what freshmen do. They learn on the fly. If they're out on the floor, they have to learn on the fly sometimes. And so Lamont is a point guard. That's what he was recruited as, a point guard. So he, his responsibility to take care of the ball is far greater than anyone else's on the floor. So he did a better job of that. And – as he continues to grow his game, he should be two to one assist to turnovers. You know, that's what you want from a good point guard. So Lamont is a very good player uh, that will continue to get better as he gets more minutes. Thank you. And, and um, you have a lot of unselfish players on your team. What, what freedom does that give you and the coaching staff in terms of developing a game plan um, when you have such great kids in the program? You know, I just tell them we, we run set plays and we may not get a shot on the set play. Then we'll just flow into offense. And so a lot of teams that, I've coached and been a part of over the years. If you call a guy's number on a set play, he's going to shoot it no matter what. You call a play for a guy. Th this team doesn't do that. They run through the action. If they don't get the exact look we want, then they get off it and they move the ball and share the ball. So that's always gratifying as a coach to have such an unselfish team.